we are live. It's Hello, everybody. Have, oh, what does that say? What does that say? Oops. Wine, please. Wine, wine please. please. Well, <laughs> time to wind down and cheers. cheers. You, know, you, you have actual wine. I do. And mainly because I thought it was kind of weak that I just needed the bottle. Yeah, instead okay. of a class. Okay. <laughs> and, and really, I just thought this was such a cool, um, I'm all about the labels. Yeah. And this bottle is called Th Throwback Thursday. And it has a little hashtag with the Very Throwback cool. Thursday. And it has an old picture. I thought it was really cute. Do Very you buy, cool. do you buy wine a lot of times based on the labels? I certainly, um, you know, I, I, I think the label makes it jump off the shelf. Right. <laughs> and then I'll look at it. Certainly 19 Crimes the first time um, I bought it. But let's, you know, if 19 Crimes had been $80 or if 19 Crimes had been $2, um, it would probably still be on the shelf. It oh, was, interesting. It was a type of wine that I liked and it was within a price range that I think, okay, that's, you know, probably drinkable. So, right. but yeah, that, you know, <laughs> if you can't get noticed, you can't get heard. If you can't get heard, you can't get the job done. So exactly. certainly those labels got your attention. Now, did you buy that bottle because of the label? I did. Um, I buy most wines because of the labels. Okay. So, and if it was $2, I would have bought a case. So, yeah. um, <laughs> Even though it might not have been drinkable. And then it may not have been drinkable, but it would have been a really cute bottle. <laughs> cute bottle. No, and I, I think the thing is I usually will buy them because of the label. And then if I like it, then I would go back and, you know, then, you know, to buy more. I usually, then I take a picture of it and put it in my, my wine app so that I can keep the ones that I like. But yeah. So you have a wine app. Oh my Tony, you know me. I have an app for everything. There's an app. Yeah. Wine lover extraordinaire, not yeah. have a wine app. And you know, it's great. It's a wine vault. And so you can keep like all your favorites. Um, when I go to a restaurant and I have a wine that I really like, I'll ask if I could take a picture of the label or if I can get the name and I write it in my little wine vault app. Well, yeah. that's a great idea. Yeah. So, that's a great idea. so happy wine down and it's been a busy happy week. Um, it's hard to believe that it's almost May that next week is May already. Yeah. And you have nothing going on in your life. Uh, it's yeah. That's it's a little, a little busy, <laughs> but you know, I always, every time I say that, and all babies, kinds of things. yeah, we have a baby coming in two weeks, not mine, my right. grand, our sixth grandchild. I and I know I can't either. My, and my, uh, then my youngest, our youngest Shreklet Bailey is getting married in July. We have her graduation coming up in May from college and yeah, all kinds of activities. So it's a it's a fun and busy time, but all all happy things. So, and you're getting ready to go on another fun art retreat, which I'm super yeah. excited to yeah. live through you as you and, go. Yes, and I'm trying to figure out. I wish I could do the be live the week I'm away, but um, be live is right in the middle of the day, and I'm not going to walk out of a class. As much yeah. as I, as much as I love my my wind down folks, <laughs> um, I'm not going to leave in the middle of a class. I said be live, but I meant wind down. Um, yeah. But yeah, I think I might, uh, inspired by you, try to do some uh, Facebook lives from the retreat. I'm very excited. I will miss you terribly because we yes. have so much fun. Together. I think it's and it's right at the time. I think it's either well, we have graduation. I think it's on right that. Yeah. yeah, it's the graduation. We have uh, the Thursday and Friday graduation yeah, ceremonies and, babies and all that stuff. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, totally understandable. Oh, Michelle yeah. said, I'm finally able to join. Yay! 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 <laughs> oh, Michelle, how good to see you. Michelle is so cool. You yes. talk about like being a going concern and, and just, yeah, Michelle's a going concern. She's always got something on the go. <laughs> on the go. Well, and if you guys are here tuning in live, be sure to shout out and say hi in the chat here. We want to, we want to give you a shout out. And, um, and today we have some, I think, juicy topics. Yes. Um, and I think it's always fun to see the different sides that we come at different, um, the things from the week. So you had a really, uh, an interesting, you said it was a video you watched that inspired you. Yes. And, and, uh, I, I will post the link. 
um, I think it came in yesterday morning uh, in my, my kind of morning digest that I get. Um, and I don't even know why I clicked on it. I think the title was uh, Starbucks CEO life defining moment or something. And um, I clicked on it. And basically what the video was about was uh, the fact that he had spent all of his life totally dedicated to his career, working hard, um, doing all of those things that we all do, but particularly in big corporate America, they, they have so many other responsibilities and, and things that consume their time. And he talked about a few years ago getting a diagnosis of melanoma. Mm. And, you know, I, I thought, oh, well, that's going to be the life defining moment. But it wasn't. Um, it was. And I don't know whether he said several months or, or a year or so later when he was standing at the airport about to board a plane for somewhere quite far away and to, to go on the trip. Uh, the business trip, he had to cancel some doctor's appointments. And he said that it was in the moment of canceling those doctor's appointments that he asked himself, what am I doing? Mm, that's and, interesting. Um, decided from that day on. Now, it's interesting in the video. It doesn't say whether he still went on the business trip. I, I'm going to assume that he did. But that he and his wife made a decision from that day on that they would not do anything that didn't bring joy and happiness um, in terms of their health, in terms of their family, um, and and that, that those were going to be their priorities. And he, they didn't just say it, that he retired and, and they did, a, you know, they made many changes. Uh, he made changes both in his work ethic and in his how he manages his personal life to to accommodate those priorities. And it, and it got me thinking. Um, my dad died very young. He died when he was 65. He was in great shape, um, you know, had done all kinds of things when he went for his 60th checkup. Uh, and I have mine coming up. So it's, uh, it's kind of like a little deja vu. And when he went for his 60th checkup, um, the doctor said that, for him to die before he was 92, he would have to get hit by a Mack truck. Um, and he was gone by 65 because he he got cancer. Mm -hmm. And I remember thinking, and, and, and dad saved a lot of the things that he really wanted to do for later in his life. Um, but by the time he got there, uh, he was sick and, and didn't have a chance to do them. And right. I swore that I would never do that. And so I think that that, the video this morning really prompted me to check back in with my priorities. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, Jared and I have a huge priority of family first. I think we're good on that one. Um, I think we, we really do put family first. Right. I don't know that we put us first or second. If the, you know, we put the family first, including the kids. Right. Um, but I, I don't know if because we work together, we put us first. And I, I watch all of my friends um, doing these incredible things and, and slowing down. And I've always said I don't want to retire. But I asked myself after watching this video, am I planning enough? Even if I'm not going to stop, am I planning enough to do those? Oh, I'm going to get all chucked up. You can take it from here. This <laughs> well. And, and I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna give a shout out to Jill. Give a shout out to Jill who said um, she's also in that club, and yeah. so yeah, priorities kind of get really clear at that point. And shout out to Bob. Hey Bob, hey, tuned Bob. in at just a couple minutes late, but um, it's interesting because we've gone through a lot of trauma with our son being at Columbine during the shootings, yeah. and we've had he almost died in the snowboarding accident a couple years later. And you know, it's sad that it takes those kind of things to get us to to reprioritize. But Kirk and I have always been. Um, probably he, I have to give him the credit for it because he's just so good at these things, but always put our relationship over even our kids because yeah. we know that at the end, like now we're empty nesters. There's a lot of people who spend so much time focused on their jobs and their kids and yeah. then they get to be our age and they go, who is this person that live that lives in the house? Yeah. And I certainly didn't want to leave the impression about the, the, we, we know of our relationship yes. as well. Right. I, I was referring more to the things 
I find myself, in fact, I am sure we've said it, I have said it this week, um, you know, we're going to, we're going to do that. We're going to do that later. We're, we're going to do that later. Mm, right. um, and, you know, we got a great trip planned with the kids this, uh, uh, this summer and, and Africa with the kids next summer. But I, I just, the, the video just reminded me that I, um, you know, we, we, you work really, really hard. I know you, I work really, really hard. Our spouses work really, really hard. And, uh, you know, I don't want to leave that trip of a lifetime or experience of a lifetime uh, for three or four years because you never know. Right. You never know. Which I think as an entrepreneur, I always think that is the beauty of what we do is we're always looking at, you know, and I'm always every year setting challenge goals for myself, personal and professional and business. But that does mean we have to work harder at those times when we're not doing those other things. I mean, I feel very fortunate that we can go. I mean, you know, we could go and do things. You can take time off in the summer, which I still haven't figured out how to do that. Um you know, yeah, and, and family, that's that's sanity first, too. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. And, and I think setting those things of saying it because it makes me sad when people say I worked, I worked, I worked, I worked. And I set all those fun things to do later. And later, I never got there. Yeah. Um, and I think there are two questions then that we all have to ask ourselves um, and not that we haven't asked them before, but they could change or maybe we just need a reminder. And I guess that question is what matters to you most um you know in this particular incident in this case with the ceo of starbucks it was his health and taking care of his health and i think as entrepreneurs we can often ignore our health yeah. long hours lots of stress um, particularly if we're having lots of stress so that we can prepare to go away and, and do something so i guess that that question is what matters most to you and and if you're listening live and even if you're not if you come in later i'd love to love to have people chime in and and i think we all say the same things right uh, family friends uh, you know our health so those things are probably the things that are the most important to us but then the second question is do you walk your talk right and 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 if those things are the like I am very proud of the fact that I have always put my kids first and I only say my kids because a lot of that time I I was a single mom um, and and I can look back with pride and say I always I always did put our, our family first um, but but if I'm really honest with myself I, I, I could be planning a little more to not wait to do some of the exciting things that we have on our bucket list. So what matters yeah, most yeah. to you and do you walk your talk? And really don't, don't say yes because you think yes is the right thing to say, because I think the purpose of this exercise is to find out where you're not walking your talk and maybe what you could do to, to change it. And you know, and, and I, know, have, and to I say, have to say, oh, oh, I have to say, I'm echoing. Echoing. do you hear the echo? No. Okay. It's okay. really, it's really, really loud echo in mine, but that's all right. Oh, now it just stopped. Okay. It's got to be in the B live system. Um, yes. I, I have to say this year I realized I wasn't walking my, well, and I don't even know it's walking my talk. Cause I wasn't even talking about my own health. Um, yes. you know, of t I, I was all about, I, there's so much to do. There's lots to do and hustle, hustle, hustle. Um, and I realized, okay, I'm, I'm was getting four or five hours of sleep and I was not going and working out anymore. And I was right. just, you know, had all kinds of things that it was always an excuse. So I think knowing sometimes it's not walking the talk because sometimes you're not even talking about, you have to pause enough to say, where am I not taking care of my priorities? Absolutely. Because like you said, we all say those things are important, but what, what do we need to do about them? Yeah, and I, I don't, this isn't something I came up with, but I remember reading this a long time ago is the expression we all use is, which I don't have time. Right. Well, you do. You, you always have time. Yeah, you make it. Time. You have 24 hours a day. Right. The question is, what do you choose to do with that time? And I, you know, I know that there are always crunch times, no pun intended, in, in business and stuff when we really have to dive down. But and, and one might feel like I, I don't have any choice. Like I've got a deadline and I have to work to get this stuff done for the deadline. So in those cases, I understand. But most of the time we do, we have a choice. We right. have a choice 
about how we use our time and how we prioritize our time. And if it's something that, that you, the proverbial you, really want to do, and we're still saying we don't have time, right? then that's a disconnect. Well, and it's that's actually because Bob brings up a great, and uh, just Bob, it's such a tragic and sad story, and yet it looks like you're doing something about it. His wife died in a highway crash at 53, Wow. unexpected and now he says I want to pack in a great mix of various priorities every day and the work aligns with how I want to spend my time which once again we tend to have to go through something to kind of shake us and say what am I doing why am I not making the time and then Bob said not waiting is a great message um, you know don't don't wait you know I know people who say I've always wanted to travel I've always wanted to go and do this is like so go like make that a priority to travel and go yeah, do those and, things. And then, you know, somebody might say, I've always wanted to travel, but I, I don't have the time. Well, you have the time and I don't have the money. Well, our son, who's 19, right. uh, went to Europe for a month, is going back to Europe for another month, Europe and Morocco and a few other places, on his own, uh, budgeted 50 mm -hmm. euros a day while he was away and came in under budget. Yeah, and there's did, always ways. There's, so there's always a way. And, yeah. and you know, we, we you just have to make the choice. Right. You and it's to, interesting, Michelle, this is interesting, the impact just you guys are having, I think, on me of, you know, Michelle also was widowed young. Yeah. And she said she should know better, but fell back into old habits. And I think it's good that she said, I'm so good at taking care of other people. We don't take care of ourselves. And I think that is something yeah. that happens to a lot of us. Yeah. Um, is we spend so much time building a business, building a career, doing for other people. And then when will we have time to enjoy it and making that a priority and making that. Um, and I think it's, you know, we can even break it down into little things like each week. What do you put on your calendar that is priorities? You know, what priorities are you addressing each week? So sometimes we might think it's it's up here and it's hard to grab onto, but maybe if we start putting those into our, our calendars as appointments. Um, and I nice. think that's great. And it reminds me, I mean, this, this show is about thinking differently and, and innovation and ideas. And one of the things that I find people don't schedule enough is simply time to think. And yeah, that's true. Say, I don't have time to think. Well, some of the greatest minds in the world um, put thinking time in their yeah. agenda. They right. actually blocked it off. So Bill Gates, for example, is famous. Does a week. Two weeks. Two weeks, yeah, of, of his. Yeah, two weeks a year. And, and not that he isn't thinking other times, but those two weeks are sacred. Yeah, yeah. It, this is his thinking time. Uh, I have a when I was a single mom and, and I don't even remember which show I used to watch with kids when they were young, but there was a, there was a big comfy chair. Uh, oh, and yeah. I, big comfy yeah, couch. Have, yes. Maybe, maybe that's what, <laughs> but I have a big chair in my office, a big red chair in my office. And that's my thinking chair. Right. And that's where I go to think. And so mm -hmm. rituals around where do you go to think? What are you doing? Is there a place you go? Is there time that you block off in your calendar to think? Because that's where the answers are. And and, and that's the one thing we find the least time for these days, I think. Right. It's just time to think. And and I have I think I've shared, I was trying to do, and I, I say trying, I'm still doing it. It's harder for some reason here in Colorado. When I'm in Arizona, I have this morning ritual, wake up, go outside. Don't turn on TV. Don't do anything. Go outside, sit outside. I, I journal. I have quiet time. I'll, I'll be outside maybe 30 minutes. By 7 a.m., I get the dogs and I go for a walk. And that is my thinking, quiet, alone time. And yes. I get so many ideas that I'm always, I'm always stuck in this position of, I want to hurry and go back home yes. to get notes written up on this. But I get yes. so many ideas in that quiet, just walking time. Um, yes. Yeah. And I think um, we need that. Yeah, there's a there's a there was a study that was done about the five places that people get their ideas most often. Right. Um, so if if you're watching live, I I will reveal the answers. But if you're watching live, where do you what do you think are the top five places? I mean, not geographical places, but the top five times 
that people get their best ideas. ideas. Or even yeah. where do you where do you each get your best ideas? Where are I, you when those strike? Right. I or what are you doing? Because I would guess that most of us, well, they are at the top five worldwide, but n none of them are a big surprise. So right. throw some answers in there. And uh, where do you get your best ideas? And where do you think, what do you think the top five uh, best idea places are? I'll, I'll give one away since, Gina, you were just talking about, and that's exercising. Yeah. When any kind of exercise, whether you're walking or running or whatever, is one of the places that people tend to get their best ideas. Right. Um, another one is asleep or, or no, sorry, in bed. So whether you're before you go to bed in the middle of the night, if you're one of those people who wake up and write things down on, on, on a little uh, pad of paper, laying yeah. in bed when I can't sleep. Exactly. <laughs> That's one of the top five places. So anything that has to do with, uh, with bedtime. The third one is in the shower that's and i have a shower proof notepad and pencil okay, in my really shower it's suction cups amazon suction cups to your, your wall and it's a waterproof paper and when i have ideas i will um i will jot those down jim says um i'm with gina if i don't take time in the morning Absolutely. i lose the opportunity oh it's so true and i just think okay at lunchtime i'll do it at lunchtime, because here in Colorado, it's still a little cold in the morning. The dogs won't walk. And so I think at lunch, and by the time the day gets going, it's gone. It's gone. It's yeah. gone. So now, Jim you know, or everyone else, like, throw out some ideas before Tony reveals number four. Is anyone shower? You said shower, exercise. Shower, bed, exercise. Bed, okay. Or anybody got any ideas? I can't see the comments, so I don't know whether there's uh, any there. You have to as, tell soon me. As, I, as soon as I hear a guess, I'll I'll throw it up on the screen. Um, okay. See, I would think I would think driving because yes. uh, because it's quiet, quiet time. Yeah, which, which tells us we need to unplug more and have more quiet places. Maybe it, the bathroom. Enough, and I, I haven't talked about this in a long time. But but in my presentation, in my keynote, I used to say turn off the noise. Right. When you right. drive, you listen to books, but you listen to books that give you that business ideas. books that can give you ideas. Right. Um, I used to drive a lot, and I don't I don't much anymore because I don't do a lot of speaking, unfortunately, in my own neighborhood anymore. But I used to drive for hours, and I would get up early in the morning, Jim, and I would give myself something to figure out between right. here in Quebec City, for example, which is three hours or something like that. Um, and so I, of course, there was no iPhones and all that stuff back then. I would stop or jot notes down, but sure enough, three hours later, I would have, um, I would have some ideas, but it's yeah. just because I set that three hours of time aside. I didn't listen to the radio. I didn't, no, I didn't listen to the radio because that interferes with my thinking. I don't right. think I've got something else going on, but yeah, so definitely driving. I thought that's it. Bob said he goes on a walk with dictation turned on. I need to try that. Oh, um, that's a good so idea. you could talk into your phone. Um, yeah, I love that. I'm going to have to try that. Jill says in my dreams, my most stressful moments in a sil or, or, in uh, or so in her dreams or in stressful moments in a silly moment, shopping, looking at ridiculous people in meetings. So Jill is inspired everywhere. Yeah, Jill's inspired everywhere. And I, I think if I read between the lines, those are in meetings she, when she's not really interested in the meeting. Because the meeting gets boring and our mind wanders. You were talking about the shower. I need to get that pad. I write them. Jared teases me because I write them in the steam. We have a glass shower. Oh, that's I write them funny. On the wall of the shower in the steam. And oh, then when that's I, great. I have to... You know, go fast to get something. It's my memory is terrible. I have to go fast to get something to write them down. But apparently, if it goes in the shower an hour later, there's still the lines. Yeah. I draw charts. I do everything else. So we have sleep, uh, oh, exercise, uh, uh, bed, and shower. And drum roll, please. Da -da 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 -da. This would be obvious, I think, is on vacation. Oh, interesting. Um, and if you think Makes about sense. those five things and what they have in common, it is because we create space in our brains. Yeah. And as long as we are focused on one thing, whether it's doing something or listening to something or whatever, our brain has no space. You've right. got to give it the space. 
Yeah, that's so true. Yeah, we have to find, we have to make quiet time and plan. I mean, you know, I did that whole week. I called my monk time. Yes. And I was just trying to practice, you know, no TV. I was alone in Arizona and just had just monk time where I could think. And I bought a yoga mat and thought I would really get into doing yoga. I think I've used it a couple of times. Um, but <laughs> I just lay there. I like the, whatever they call the corpse pose. That's my favorite where you just lay there. Um, yeah, but I think we do need to make that. I, I know. I start with it, and then I never. That's my problem. I never. I never get past the corpse pose. Um, but I do think I, we all need to have more quiet time um, to reflect and create and think of ways to. Again, when we even think of our priorities, I mean, this week it had me thinking partly because it was a stressful week, but it had me thinking of: Is it time to disrupt myself? And that was yeah. my whole topic was, how do you know when <laughs> when you're just having a bad day or a bad week? Or, you know, how do you know when you need to disrupt yourself? Yes. And how do you know when it's time to persist? And right. I think That's it's one of question. those things that in business, if we don't disrupt ourselves, we will become disrupted by someone else, by outside forces, by change. Yes. So I think in our businesses, we always have to be thinking that. Is it time to evolve a little to disrupt the way we're doing things because if I don't, I become irrelevant. Um, or is it just me feeling, um, I, I just get bored or anxious or stressed or feel like things aren't working the way I want them to work. And so this week, and it was interesting because I came up with this whole thing of, I love pasta or pasta as, yeah. as the Canadians say. Pasta. And so pa pasta. I, I, yeah. So I came up with this whole thing, which is interesting because one of the um, things that I came in there uh, was P for pause. And when I'm trying to think of, is it time to shift? I need to pause and have that quiet time to reflect, right. to think, do, is this, is this, does this make sense? And then I need to A for pasta, A is for ask, ask other people, ask a mastermind group, ask a coach. So I need to pause and I need to ask other people what their feelings are. Now, sometimes we ask the wrong people and they don't even know our business well enough, but still take some time to ask other people. And then S is where I was doing this week is searching, searching online resources, different things, just to kind of educate myself with what's out there. Um, if you're thinking of a new direction or a new product, a new service, or a new way of doing something in your life, search take time to search and then t is for testing and that might be where we need to do some tests in our business to see is this marketable right. is there an audience for it and the last one is a for alter it um, alter our plan so um, if it doesn't work if the test doesn't go well then we need to alter which you know when we talk about our squiggle in our journey you know we, we've altered our plan and we've altered our business based on the changes that we make, we have to alter. Suddenly we, people go in with a business plan thinking this is what I need to do, or we have a marketing plan and this is what we have to execute. But once you test something and you tweak it, you have to now have a new plan and alter your plans to do that. So I think it's interesting that the pause is the biggest piece that most of us have a hard time with is taking enough time to determine, is it just me being, um, anxious isn't the word I'm looking for, but, um, you know, I'm just getting uh, wanting to do something different and I'm I'm getting my my ADD is kicking in or is it really time to disrupt my own business? And I think, you know, it's one of those uh, things that whether it's a, I think it's a good thing for us to do all the time. Yes. And I think we don't make enough of the pause time to create and even think of, is it time to disrupt ourselves? And there are, we know there's lots of people who have should have been disrupted a long time ago and now they're disrupted by outside forces and they're, they're freaked out about it. Yeah. And I think there are two situations. First of all, I love all of that. I think there are two situations and I wasn't sure where you were going um, with it. And one is you need to disrupt yourself. We call them in our work, we call them self inflicted upheavals. Oh, I so love that. Self inflict an upheaval on ourselves because that's what we need to do. And you, you might need to do that as, as you point out, because if you don't, somebody else will. Right. Uh, but the other thing, and I think I, I heard that a little bit in the beginning of what you were talking about is if it's not working. Right. For you, it could be working for your customers. It could be work. Your business could be doing right. 
great. But if you were waking up every day stressed right. and worried and, and, you know, complaining and not having a good time, well, that's when you need to, to have some pasta. You need, you need to take a <laughs> Um, yeah, you need to pause and you need to start asking. Because even if it's working for everybody else, if it's not working for you, that's that right. takes us full circle to the beginning of today's show, which is that's really the only thing that matters. And I don't mean that in an egotistical sense. I just mean if you're not taking care of yourself, your health, that's your right. family, your loves, your time, then it doesn't matter how successful the business is because yeah. like my father, perhaps you won't be around to enjoy it. Exactly. So, and I think it's one of those things we get to a point going, I've worked so hard. Why? Why? Yeah. And it's that, it's that thing. It's interesting. Jill said, I'm in disrupt mode. We yeah. call my, my little yeah. dog who you can hear right now going insane because we have painters here and we call her the agent of chaos. And right. uh, sometimes we have to be the agent of chaos in our own life and disrupt things because it's, uh, maybe we've gotten into a lull. We think things are okay, but we're not super happy with the way things are going. Maybe it's, we don't, feel that it's going right, but everybody else does. Maybe it's the other way around. You know, it's just, I think taking time to pause and I don't think we would even recognize it unless we have that quiet time. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. That time is so important. And speaking of time, I know it's already, it's already half past. It the is hour. already and half past whatever hour it is, wherever you are. So I think it's time for us to have some wine and just pause this weekend, make some time, make some time for margin this weekend. Yeah, make that way. I call it my buffer. So your buffer. This this weekend, why don't you look at your schedule and make some time, Jim? Probably you're going to be out in some white water rafting adventure. But uh, for the rest of us normal folks, look <laughs> at the, normal by me. We're not as adventurous, perhaps. No. As Jim. I am. I am going snowshoeing, uh, moonlight oh. snowshoeing tomorrow. Um, we're doing a moonlight hike up a mountain, an A basin, and then have dinner up there. And then you snowshoe back down. See, that's, well, that's it. Uh, no, so that'll be fun. I, 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 I'm not doing that because we're up at the cottage. That's about all that I can, that's I can good. say. We're just that's going good to pause. take some time to relax. And, and, and wind enjoy. down. Yeah. And wind down. So Cheers. thanks for tuning in, everybody. Cheers. Have a great week. And we will see you. Next week on Friday. That's right. We'll see you then. Bye. Happy weekend, everyone. Happy weekend.